How to Calculate Probability of Failure If you're working on a project or managing a system and you're wondering how to calculate the probability of failure, you're in the right place. Understanding this concept is crucial for assessing the reliability and safety of your systems. To start, let's define what failure probability is. It's a measure of the likelihood that a system or component will fail within a specified time period. This is often used in reliability engineering to evaluate the performance of products and systems. Now, let's get into the calculation. The formula for failure probability is quite straightforward. PF equals frac n t times 100. Here, PF is the failure probability expressed as a percentage, n is the number of failures that have occurred, and t is the time period over which these failures were observed. Let's break it down step by step. First, you need to determine the number of failures n that have happened. This could be the number of times a machine broke down or the number of defective products in a batch. Next, you need to determine the time period t over which these failures were observed. This could be in hours, days, months, or any other relevant unit of time. Once you have these two values, you can plug them into the formula. For example, if you had five failures over a period of 12 months, the calculation would look like this. PF equals left FAC 5 times 100. To solve this, first divide 5 by 12, which gives you approximately 0 0.4167. Then multiply this result by 100 to convert it to a percentage. 0 0.4167 times 100 equals 41.67%. So in this example, the failure probability would be approximately 41.67%. This method is simple yet effective for giving you a clear picture of how likely it is for a system or component to fail within a given time frame. It's a tool that can help you make informed decisions about maintenance, design improvements, and overall system reliability. In some cases, you might need to consider different types of data, such as demand-based or time-based failures. For instance, if you're dealing with items that fail on demand, like a starter solenoid, you might use a binomial probability distribution to model the failure rate. However, the basic principle of calculating failure probability remains the same. It's about understanding the number of failures and the time frame in which they occurred. By following these steps, you can accurately calculate the probability of failure and use this information to enhance the reliability and performance of your systems.